So this is just a short tutorial on um, how to actually do texture sets within Substance Painter. There is information out there on this. Um, one big page for this is literally the Substance uh, Painter page. It explains pretty much everything that I'm going to cover in here, but I'm just going to go over it as quick as possible. Um, the basic thing is that materials in Max, Maya, Modo, whatever you're using, Blender, they will be used as a texture set within Substance Painter if you choose to, to use that. Um, the way it works is essentially a texture set is an unwrapped object or objects all within the 0 to 1 UV space. So if you don't know what the 0 to 1 uh, UV space is, if I just uh, turn off that, um, the 0 to 1 UV space is this side to this side. It's literally this square. 0 to 1, going into UDIMS, there's, you know, 1, 1, there's 1, 1, 2, um, what is it, 2, 2, 1, yeah, it, it gets it gets complicated with UDIMS, but you don't need to know the numbers because generally things are done for you these days. Essentially, this box here has a material applied to it. This material is called box. This sphere has a material applied to it called box 2, which is very intuitive, as you can tell. Um, and that one is also unwrapped 0 to 1. So if I was to import both these objects together into Painter, I'd get two texture sets, one called box and one called box 2. So to see this in practice, uh, let's just look at this model. I already showed this model, but um, worth just kind of going over it again. This is separated into upper receiver, um, silencer, suppressor. You know, it should be called a suppressor, but you know. Uh, lower receiver, grips, and magazine. So I've split this up into a lot more materials than really is necessary, but this was a portfolio piece. So it's not unnecessary to split it up into this many materials because quite frequently in games, especially if you modulize stuff, modulize if that is even a word, but if you have things that are modular, you separate it off into the parts that you would expect to see moved over to each uh, piece of the weapon. So the silencer, um, keep saying silencer, suppressor being one of those things, upper and lower receiver generally would be together. Um, and then the grip and the magazine because the grip would be changing on it. The magazine might change to a long magazine, you know, um, the suppressor might change. And if any changes do happen to the actual weapon here, it'll probably be likely um, quite substantial changes, you know, like the, the shapes will change. So each one of these parts that are different color are a different material. As you can see here, each material name is represented by each color that's represented here. Once that's exported in an FBX, and you can see here I've got uh, two meshes, one uh, exploded, one non-exploded. This is just what I do for baking um, parts that move uh, due to the fact that you don't want AO to spread over areas that are, um, and like they animate essentially, they, they are not to be occluded by other parts of the mesh. So if I go back to Painter, this is what happens when you've uh, you've imported your parts, uh, you, you don't get a final model. Obviously, that's that's the work that I put in, but uh, you get this, which is your te your texture sets. Each one of these texture sets that come in are the material names, as you'd expect. So make sure you name them appropriately. Um, don't do what I did with a, a sphere and call it box two, because then you're going to be tripping over your own feet and having a lot of fun when it comes to texturing. So with this. Um, essentially you work from what, or what I would define as the master texture set. So the master texture set for this one is the upper. So it's where I did most of the work. Um, I, I make most of the stuff. So you can imagine all of these just being ignored up until the point where I, I come to them. So I'm, I'm working on this one piece. Um, obviously you bake everything together because the way it works for the baking as well, I can just quickly cover this. So. If I just turn these on, um, all of them, and I go to the texture set settings, if I go to bake maps, essentially it works exactly the same. 
the only thing you have to be curi uh, not curious of but um the understanding of is when you you are baking your occlusion over mesh name or same mesh name or um baking all these texture sets together because the last thing you want to do is you change one thing on one texture set and then click bake select it uh bake uh, select the textures which means that it bakes all of them um so you, you you've got to make sure in your selection you you turn off what you want to bake if you want to bake selected um or you click whatever map you're on or whatever texture set you're on at the time to bake that one so with that baked and you've got your layers um an example if i go back to upper of the instantiated texture sets which is the, literally the most important thing and the only thing you really need to know with working with texture sets is if i was to go to this gm gun coat which is one of my instantiated texture sets that goes across and works on the upper slide um the lower um the magazine all of that stuff comes from this main one um not details though so i'll i'll, I'll preface that so a lot of these swirl details and marks and print marks and stuff like that they're in the other texture set lists they're not in this one this is just for like your smart material that's applied to all of the materials and then you do do your detail on top of them so if i was to change the the base color from this you'll see what i mean so it changes all of these other texture sets and if I go then to one of these other ones, like the magazine, for instance, you can see GM, con uh, GM coat instance. And the way that that's instanced is essentially in the smart material or whatever material you're making, because you're essentially making a smart material. You are right clicking it and you are instantiating it across texture sets and you are clicking the ones you want it to be on, selecting OK. And then it appears in that texture set just like so. And then essentially you do the detailing on top. So, you know, if you, if you wanted those different roughness marks, you'd be painting them by hand in this material, not going in the master, which would be the upper and painting them in there. Cause if I, if I do this, you'll see exactly what will happen. So nothing. Whereas then if I go to the upper area, I can paint here. Can't paint here because this is a di different texture set. There is no way currently in Painter to work over multiple texture sets within a single um, layer group. Uh, maybe in the future that'll be added and that would be quite helpful um, to be able to just, you know, in viewport click and it, it allows you to paint on it in the same way in, in ZBrush, you press Alt and click and it allows you to work on that texture. Um, but right now there isn't. And that's basically the way that you deal with uh, texture sets. Uh, so hopefully that helps.